What do you do when your meds for erectile dysfunction are not working? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're gonna to talk about what's the next step if your medications that you're trying to take for erectile dysfunction are not working. Now, in a previous video, we talked about how to make sure you're optimizing taking those ED meds and not making the most common mistakes that people make when they take those medications. Now, if you're still having issues, what can you do? Today, we're gonna to cover exactly that. What can you add to your ED meds to get a stronger, harder, firmer erection? Now, erectile dysfunction is very, very common. It's expected to affect 300 million men worldwide by 2025. And basically, how do you define ED? It's the persistent inability to attain and maintain an erection that's sufficient for sexual penetration. Now, very often when you're struggling with erections, you'll be prescribed a medication. And these medications are PDE5 inhibitors. They're like sildenafil, tadalafil, or vardenafil, also known as Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra. And they help you on demand, meaning you take it before you have sex. However, these sometimes don't work. And I've talked about this in the past in that video about how sometimes it takes you six to eight tries before you see full efficacy of those medications. But even then, it's only about 70 to 80% effective, meaning that 20 to 30% of guys who use it, it's not gonna work. So to review, these medications work by inhibiting the breakdown of an enzyme called cyclic guanosine monophosphate, or CGMP. Now this is a key molecule that's involved in the process of the erection. And it's great for helping maintain erections and get erections, but it's not actually reversing the problem. And so first and foremost, before I give you any other things that you can add to your regimen to help you get erections, you've got to figure out what is causing the erectile dysfunction and how to fix it. So what causes ED? Most often it's vascular or blood flow issues, which means that you need to work on improving your blood pressure, your lipid panel, so your cholesterol and your diabetes. And you can learn about ED and all the causes in a variety of videos and podcasts I've made in the past. So make sure you check those out because again, treating the underlying issue is the most important part of this process. Now what typically happens, most often if you fail these medications, you'll be offered something called an intracavernosal injection. Now this is a medication that's injected into the penis directly to increase blood flow. Now these are very effective medications, but it requires injections and for obvious reasons, it's scary to a lot of men. And that's something that they really would like to avoid. So. To help you out, I looked at some research on combining other treatments with PDE5 inhibitors to help you get, again, better, stronger, firmer erections. Number one, adding a daily Tadalafil with the on-demand medication. Now this is by far my favorite combination treatment because you are essentially continuously increasing blood flow to the genitals. It's not just on-demand. So if you think about it like this, at baseline, the penis has a low oxygenated state. And so when you get an erection, that's the only time you get increased blood flow to the penis. Now, normally your body takes care of getting blood flow and oxygen to those tissues regularly because you're having nighttime erections, three to five nighttime erections every single night. However, when you have erectile dysfunction, those nocturnal erections go away. So now you're not actually increasing blood flow throughout the day only when you try to have sex with these medications. So taking daily medication allows you to increase blood flow to the penis throughout the day, particularly when you have those nighttime erections spontaneously, which then prevents tissue damage from lack of oxygenation. When you're in this constant low oxygen state, the tissues are changing all the time and they're getting a little bit less flexible, less elastic, maybe even developing some scar tissue or what we call fibrosis. Now, as I mentioned, guys with normal erections don't need this because they're getting good nighttime erections and good blood flow to the genitals on their own. Now, how well does this work? So once they looked at a total of 180 patients who had erectile dysfunction and they were randomly assigned to either take five milligrams of Tadalafil daily with a 50 milligram sildenafil on demand, meaning when you wanted to have sex, compared to just five milligrams of Tadalafil daily for 12 weeks. Now, the results showed that both groups had pretty similar improvements in terms of erectile function based on these validated questionnaires that we use. However, combination therapy was actually better for those men who had severe erectile dysfunction. And so this is an important fact, right? If you have severe ED, you're more likely to fail those medications 
on demand. And this is a great option before having to do more invasive treatment options. Now, another study looked at men who didn't respond to those on-demand medications. So this is a specific subset of men and treated them with on-demand Tadalafil in addition to a daily dose of Tadalafil. And they did that for five milligrams daily and they could then take either 10 milligrams or 20 milligrams with that five milligrams on demand for 12 weeks. And what they found was that daily Tadalafil, in addition to that on demand Tadalafil, increased erectile fu function significantly compared to just taking Tadalafil as needed. And lastly, in a study of men, again, who didn't respond to on-demand medications, they were then offered to take 20 milligrams of Dalafil every other day or Vardenafil 20 milligrams every day for two weeks. So they didn't take a five milligram dose, but they took a larger dose every other day or every day. And what they found was that 11% of those patients in the Tadalafil group and 18% of the patients in the Vardenafil group now were able to get erections. These are not huge numbers, but again, if you're struggling with erections and you're not getting the effect you want, this is a great option. Number two, adding testosterone replacement therapy. Now the rationale behind this approach is that if you have low testosterone or what we call androgen deficiency, that can contribute to erectile dysfunction. And potentially the combination of these medications and testosterone may have what we call a synergistic effect. However, Three randomized control trials looking at this found no significant benefit in adding testosterone replacement to medications for ED compared to men who were just getting medications for ED for erectile function. Now, these studies included men who had normal testosterone and they were not very large studies. So I suspect that if you have truly low testosterone and you have symptoms of low testosterone, one of which is erectile dysfunction, you will see a benefit, particularly in nighttime erections, which will allow you then to maintain oxygenation to the tissues at nighttime. But sometimes people do have low testosterone, but they also have other issues causing their ED, which is very, very common. Only about three to 6% of men is low testosterone, the sole cause of erectile dysfunction. Bottom line, if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction, it is beneficial to at least get tested for your testosterone level and determine if adding testosterone replacement therapy may be a good option for you. Next up, number three, adding antioxidants. Now, I've talked about some antioxidants before on this channel, specifically L-arginine. So you can watch videos about that, but L-arginine, as well as another antioxidant, propionyl L-carnitine, has shown some benefit in treating men with ED. Now, briefly to review, L-arginine is a precursor to nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is the ignition for erections. Now, propionyl L-carnitine is an antioxidant, and what antioxidants do is they prevent the formation of reactive oxygen species, and these ROS, or reactive oxygen species, work to deactivate nitric oxide, so they're then preventing that ignition from sticking around long enough to get erections. Now, a systematic review looked at nine total studies, including over 300 patients, and they were getting L-arginine somewhere between 2.5 to 5 grams per day, or propionyl L-carnitine 2 grams per day, in addition to a 50 or 100 milligrams sildenafil on demand. And mostly these studies saw significant improvements in erectile function. Now, some of these studies did have really short follow-up for only eight to 12 weeks, and they had really, again, small numbers. So we still need larger studies with long-term follow-up to see if this is something that will help everybody, but certainly a great option if you are struggling to add L-arginine or L-citrulline, which is a precursor to L-arginine, which I've also talked about on the channel before, or propionyl L-carnitine. What about other combination therapies? So in that same systematic review that reviewed the antioxidants, they also looked at other combinations. So they looked at PDE5 inhibitors with things like metformin, folic acid, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and angiotensin type 1 receptor antagonists, which are often used for high blood pressure. Now, some of these combinations showed some promising results, but they were still really, really small studies, and I wouldn't necessarily take this data and recommend this widely. I have talked about folic acid before on this channel, so you can check out the video about that. But the data from that is really on small numbers of patients. But there was one interesting tidbit I found from this review, which was that the people who benefit from taking folic acid was even more impressive in men who had baseline low levels of folic acid or evidence of a condition called hyperhomocysteinemia. Now, 
You can test for these things by getting a blood test to measure folic acid or testing for the presence of something called an MTHFR genotype. Now, usually if you do have MTHFR genotype or hyperhomocysteinemia, you're gonna have other symptoms, things like weakness, dizziness, sores on the mouth or tongue, but ultimately it's a reasonable thing to check your folic acid and see if you may benefit. Number five is adding shockwave therapy. Now I have made several videos on what shockwave therapy is as well as how effective it is, but essentially it works by sending sound waves to the erectile tissue, resulting in microscopic trauma, which then leads to your body sending a whole host of growth factors that causes new blood vessel formation. But does it improve erectile function in addition to medications like PDE5 inhibitors? Now, full transparency, I currently offer shockwave therapy in my practice, and I do see significant benefits in men who are not responding perfectly to PDE5 inhibitors. However, you don't have to just take my word for it. There's also some evidence to support this. A randomized control trial in 2020 looked at 92 men who are about 65 years of age on average, who had ED specifically after prostatectomy for prostate cancer. Now, these men had daily Tadalafil plus eight sessions of shockwave therapy once per week, and they did see a significant improvement in erectile function. Now, this is not a perfect study. It doesn't include all different types of men. There still needs to be more research done in this space to understand better if this is really a wonderful option for all men. But I think ultimately this is promising and there are options available to try before having to do something more invasive like an injection or a vacuum erection device. Now, before you go, I want to let you know about my newsletter called Your Ology with Dr. Matt. Alec, and each and every week we send you a newsletter that covers one new research article that I haven't covered on my YouTube channel, as well as I answer a newsletter subscriber question. In addition, I'll let you know what's going on with me and updates from the podcast as well as the YouTube channel. So in case you didn't get a chance to watch the video or listen to the podcast, you get to see a little bit about what's covered in there and decide if you have the time to add that to your playlist. And of course, as always, take care of yourself because you're worth it.